What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 wrestlers who completely buried the fans. It's always a interesting situation when the wrestlers are able to combat the fans chanting or the fans trying to interrupt their segment or promo and they're able to clap back at them on some most of the time improvised situations and they're able to kind of roast the fans themselves which is always a good interaction you want that interaction where you know your the fans are saying something obviously wouldn't part of not supposed to be a part of the segment or the script and the wrestlers able to think on their feet and be like you know what you know what screw you guys and being able to give that interaction because it, it's it's dope it's dope that's what you pay money for to get that unique experience man in the wrestling atmosphere so we're gonna check this out uh this is by obviously wrestling flashback let's get right into this one man wrestling is all about getting a response from the fans regardless mm. if it's the desired reaction or not it's like Having a basketball team in Seattle. Mm -hmm. The booze. For a heel, heat is life, no matter how you get it. Yep. Classic you easy dog. Directly <laughs> insulting or getting angry at the fans may seem like low hanging fruit, but today we're looking at instances where heels completely destroyed the crowd. Be a man or sit down and be a Shut your mouth! <laughs> we highlight 10 times wrestlers buried the fans. Number one, The Rock's infamous uh, Toronto promo. Uh -huh. Hollywood Rock was perhaps the greatest short term character there's ever been in wrestling. He was uh, a Hollywood Rock. He was great. He was. He was one of those heels, like, he knew how to get the crowd to boo, but at the same time, he was so entertaining. It's like, it's a love hate relationship. Hollywood Rock, for the little time that we did have him, was gold that is best when tearing down other wrestlers and the people you ain't nothing five feet nothing excuse <laughs> me his cell phone's going off hey it's nothing he says he knows you <laughs> the iconic rock concerts gave the great one the perfect platform to rain down you ain't talks. nothing like when he sang about leaving sacramento i'll be sure to come back when the lakers beat the kings in may for this entry though we're going to look at the time when the people's champ tore the city of toronto a new one rock began the promo by saying how he'd come to toronto to run his mouth he then imitated the crowd we live in toronto yay shut up <laughs> reminding us all that toronto was the place where the people turn on the rock at wrestlemania 18. the great one closed things out by insulting the local sports team the maple leafs suck as well as the fans in attendance. Take all your booze, stick them straight up your maple syrup, suck it, can they ass it? The crowd <laughs> chanting Rocky at the start of the promo, mm -hmm. chanting asshole at the end of it. This was Hollywood Rock at his best. Yeah. Rock may have been crapping on the crowd, but he was crapping ice cream. Number two, Kurt Angle loses it over you suck chance. <laughs> the fact that Kurt Angle would be met with you suck chance every time he made his entrance. And it's crazy, even after he, you know, pretty much in his later years when he wasn't re wrestling on a regular as a babyface they still chanting you suck it's crazy how the wrestling world is like chanting something like you suck to one of the greats as a positive endearment it's it's weird <laughs> it's funny how that happens in wrestling like you suck towards kurt angle is a good thing <laughs> It was only a matter of time before he snapped uh. at the fans. And this happened on the November 7th, 2005 Raw, where Angle was set to wrestle in the show's main event. With the You Suck chants raining down, <laughs> Kurt got on the mic and scolded the crowd, saying he hates the chant. I hate that chant! He then decided he would keep redoing his entrance until the fans uh, yep. gave him the respect he deserved. I remember this. We're gonna go do it over again. However, the chants only got louder, <laughs> even continuing without the music. And this led to Angle getting even more frustrated. This is so the good. the fans to shut up and calling them stupid. Everybody wants to see the people stupid. Kurt did his entrance for a third time, but it was more of the same, resulting in Angle refusing to compete. Kurt went on an epic rant saying how his wife left him because he gave his life to the wrestling business for the fans. Angle called the audience self-absorbed, selfish bastards. Bastards. Before closing things out by saying the fans are the ones that suck and that they and the main event can go to hell. You people are the ones that suck! Kurt eventually did come back out to wrestle, but only under the condition that the fans didn't chant, You suck. Luckily, Raw GM Eric Bischoff had a clever plan to drown out the chants. <laughs> This was Angle at his 
funniest and funniest being the true entertainer he is segments like this are like oh my god he can be serious <laughs> funny angry and upset all at the same time portraying each emotion to perfection so Which great Hollywood rock Kurt eventually got to a point where he was so entertaining as a heel people could help <laughs> cheer him I'm a boy in a man's world and I'm a man who loves to play with boys <laughs> His feud with fucking Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> WWE went insane lengths to try and get yeah, people to do nah, he, he started going a little bit too far with Booker T's wife over here talking about how much he wants to have bestiality sex with him. I'm like, what? Although, but it just didn't work. Angle even made light of this at New Year's Revolution 2006. I hope the U.S. loses the war in Iraq. I'm not a very big fan of the black people. I can say anything I want to these idiots, and they'll still cheer for me. Number three, <laughs> That's that's a Vince McMahon line. Oh, this will be funny. Go out there and, and say this, Kurt. <laughs> Ray Dudley's heat wave incident. In the late 90s, few wrestlers got more heat than the Dudleys. The next person who throws something, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. <laughs> riots in ECW. Yeah. X-rated promos. I wish that fan hadn't done that. Bubba Ray Dudley now going after that fan. One such example was at Heat Wave 1999, where the Dudley's pre-match promo had Dayton, Ohio crowd vying for blood. First, Bubba stated how just being in the town made him sick. He then mm -hmm. targeted specific fans in the audience, yep. later offering Infamous. to fight any fan who dared jump the rail. Bubba eventually got up close and personal by throwing beer at a bold fan. Yep. And then spitting at a feisty woman who was there with her daughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was all in good fun as the fans chanted ECW at the end. Nevertheless, Heatwave was most certainly a show that lived up to its name. Oh, Number four, yeah, Jay nah, that, that man, ECW was a different one, man. <laughs> it, it had its core fan base, but they, yeah, they. There was no holes barred with them, man. ABL insults Mexican fans in LA. Oh, Next, we have bro. a promo that was so offensive and discriminatory, it's being edited off the WWE Network. Of course. Together. JBL had nuclear heat in 2004. Come on, Ricky. This is more money you can make in a whole summer of hauling hay. <laughs> From cutting bro, promos at the Mexican... <laughs> once again, this was on television, bro. This... Once again... For those who weren't born in this time period or weren't able to see this live, th the world was so much different back then, bro. The world, it, it, you literally damn near can almost say anything and get away with it because people just didn't care that much. Mexican <laughs> border. <laughs> To causing Eddie Guerrero's mother to have a heart attack. The fans wanted to see Eddie absolutely destroy Bradshaw at the Judgment mm -hmm. Day pay-per-view. But before the match, JBL got on the mic where he once again took things too far. Bradshaw took aim at the Mexican fans in the crowd in a promo that has aged very poorly. Yeah. I know that a lot of you swam an awful long way and climbed a bunch of fences to get here. He would get so personal and nasty, it gave him very few redeeming qualities in the eyes of the fans, who booed him like crazy as a result. <laughs> Triple H buries fans. Some would say Triple H is no stranger to creatively burying wrestlers. Oh, yeah. WrestleMania, I put an end to your dreams and I bury Daniel Bryan. What is great, for sure is that he's great, no stranger great to WrestleMania match. fans on the mic. Sorry to this jack off that thinks because he's got his hat on backwards like me, he's cool. I'm sorry to his girlfriend because she's got no boots. <laughs> Whether he's singling out specific people or subtly throwing shade at an entire subsection of fans. Much where this fat piece of crap is sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> the cerebral assassin loves to rile up the masses. I'm gonna tweet my displeasure. <laughs> that doesn't work. Me and my friend Mark, we're gonna stop watching. One such example occurred during the September. <laughs> that shit is funny because that's all Twitter is. I'm gonna tweet how I don't like this. And then me and my friends, we're going to stop watching. <laughs> and there's no wrong with voicing your opinion, but some of y'all, y'all get so riled up to the point where it'd be like, all right, well, don't watch it no more, man. <laughs> don't watch it. If it's just that awful, it's no redeeming qualities about the show, just don't watch it. <laughs>
September 27, 2004. Oh, so man, cool. that was great. Hunter was unhappy over the fact that the fans would get to vote for his opponent at the Taboo Tuesday pay-per-view. Helmsy said that he can't control the fans' jobs, so why should they be able to control his? He took this as an opportunity to target two fans in particular. I don't come to where this guy works and tell him when the fries are done. <laughs> I don't come to where this chick works and tell him what street corner to stand on. <laughs> <laughs> he then gave the crowd some options regarding what they should do with their lives. You can go screw yourself. Just looking around this arena, that's a pretty good choice because no one's going to do it for you. The <laughs> didn't care for Triple H's suggestions and made this known by calling the World Heavyweight Champion an asshole. Number six, <laughs> Edge tells the fans they're wrong. Edge was one of the top heels during the Ruthless Aggression era. For sure. He was decadent and opportunistic in the ring and razor sharp on the mic. Despite being more of a vicious character during this period, he would still show his entertainment <laughs> side game, something we saw more regularly during Edge's days teaming up with Christian. Isn't that right, Bubba Ray? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, D-Bob? Edge was in full entertainment mode on the Raw following No Way Out 2009. Despite the fact the Radar Superstar had lost the WWE Championship at the pay-per-view, he ended the show by capturing the World Heavyweight title. <laughs> bro, Kofi, bro, always, for some reason, gets so short in his feet. This nigga was laying dead on the stairs and took a concerto to the, the dome piece. Bro, that's so messed up. Kofi didn't deserve that, bro. Let's look at this again. I'm for... This nigga Kofi was dead. He got taken out because of Edge's frustration. <laughs> Kofi. The world heavyweight title. Therefore, he was in a celebratory mood. Edge celebrated by sticking it to the fans. First, he told them what the R in rated R stood for. Resplendent. Or really, really smart. The You Suck chants were out in force straight away. However, the champion had a rather unique comeback. They're all like big fat failure turtles. Edge proceeded to tell all the fans how wrong they were for doubting him after he lost the WWE title. Wrong, 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 wrong. You were wrong. You were wrong. <laughs> you were wrong. You were definitely wrong. Wrong. The world champ was on absolute <laughs> fire here, finishing his promo by comparing himself to Jesus. Jesus turned water into wine, and I turned the WWE title into the world heavyweight championship. While this may have been one of Edge's most entertaining promos, Vince McMahon didn't like it at all. Wow. I had a really good time out there. He hated it, but I wow. still have people who quote me. <laughs> Big fat failure turtles, which is what I called the audience. <laughs> he despised oh it. So who knows? Number seven, R Truth turns on the fans. R Truth's character got a much. This was this was actually quite entertaining, bro. When he started turning on the fans, the little Jimmy's and all this stuff. Oh, this is good. He did a face lift in 2011 when he turned heel on his tag team partner John Morrison, all while smoking a cigarette. Yeah. The next week, Truth blamed the people for his decision to turn heel. Instead of asking what's up, he told the audience to shut up. He received boos for this, so he replied saying the fans should be booing themselves instead. Then came the debut of Little Jimmy, Jimmy yep. a pseudonym for the type of fan Truth tried to please as a babyface. Yep. What's up? You singing what's up? Is that putting any titles around my waist? I didn't think so, Little Jimmy. You can wipe your nose and shut up! After yep. poking fun at a young fan <laughs> with glasses, Truth ended the promo with a phrase that was synonymous with his heel run. The truth has set me free. Truth was fantastic here. So nah, this shit was epic fashion entertaining. With a tirade against the people. The because of the fans excuse for a heel turn would later be run into the ground. I used to put so much stock in your opinion until I realized you're so full of crap. But when our truth cut this type of promo, it was still fresh. Plus mm -hmm. his delivery and comedic timing was just gold. I hear rapping and dancing every week. A lot of y'all be out of tune. And I'll Truth <laughs> was a heel, and it's no surprise he was face again only a short while later. You talking to me? I'm talking to you. You talking to me? Are you talking to these other guys? Here? Ain't no other guys behind me. <laughs> I know. He think this is a joke. He think we joking. The fans just couldn't boo him since he was just so entertaining. Rooster is a rooster from Brewster. You don't know nothing about <laughs> Just hit the. <laughs> The hard game. Bro, our truth is a national gem, bro. There's there's nothing else to say other than our truth is he's a he's a national gem, bro. That being said, some of Truth's best work today was as a heel in 2011, and he couldn't have kicked it off better by following up his attack on John Morrison with a tremendous promo. Number eight, Batista buries the fans. Just like our mm. truth, Batista cut some of his Woo! best promos as a heel. So you go ahead, you keep on. 
kissing babies and hugging fat girls. <laughs> and I'm gonna be in a gym somewhere training. I hate you too. Went down on the go home edition of Raw before the animals match against John Cena at WrestleMania 26. Big Dave began by hilariously mocking Cena. You can't see me. You can't see me. You want to come? Come get some. You want to come get some? But he then turned What's his attention up, to the audience, it? stating that all he saw when he looked into the crowd was dollar signs. I see money, money, dollar signs, dollar signs, because I see a lot of fat people in the audience, and I know you're paying for two seats. Batista <laughs> <laughs> was on top form and went back through the curtain, believing he had done a solid <laughs> job, but not everyone agreed, including Vince, who hated the promo. Damn. Vince went to see you in his office, and they went to see Vince. He goes, that was the worst promo I've <laughs> ever heard. It was <laughs> disgusting. And I, just, I was like, the worst promo you've ever heard? Really? Number nine, Sean Michael. It wasn't even that bad of a promo, to be honest with you. <laughs> Bates in Berry's Montreal. Of HBK's course. notorious promo in Montreal is well known for how he baited the fans not mm -hmm. only once, but twice, while also burying the crowd at the same time. This was the first time Sean worked as a heel in Montreal since mm -hmm. the screw job, so you knew the heat would be tenfold, while HBK made sure to up the ante. Michaels began performing his own rendition of the Canadian national anthem. Oh, Canada. <laughs> The showstopper then coaxed the crowd into thinking a Canadian hero was set to make his return. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Got your hopes up just a little bit. <laughs> beat the crowd for a second time by tricking them into believing Sean's upcoming Summer Sam opponent was going to come out. Brother. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they mocked the crowd for being fooled so easily. You Canucks are not the sharpest knives in the drawer. Michaels finished by saying the Montreal fans do nothing but talk, while HBK walks the walk. Sean delivered a very memorable segment, reminding us just how great of a heel he can be. Mm -hmm. Number 10, Kevin Owens buries Full Sail. The crowd for NXT at Full Sail University certainly loved their wrestling. Those who attended the venue built up a great sense of community, having seen mm -hmm. the promotion go from a developmental territory to becoming its own viable brand. So when the Black Goals show began to outgrow full sale, the fans there became unhappy because it meant they would no longer get to see NXT's pay-per-view events live and in person due to the fact these shows would now be emanating from bigger arenas as a result of NXT's growing success. The full sale fans made their feelings known about the change during the go-home show for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn in 2015, hijacking the closing segment involving Kevin Owens with Brooklyn Sucks Chance. KO quickly shut the audience down, however, ranting about how they were hypocrites for chanting this. Are you too stupid to realize how hypocritical you are all being? As he felt they were selfish mm. and jealous over the fact the upcoming TakeOver show was going to be held elsewhere. Owens also called the Full Sail crowd the John Cena of wrestling fans. <laughs> Kevin continued to call out the fans in the building, making some more good points before ending his rant with a few insults. You boo because it's not yours anymore because you're not going to get to see it live. I'm performing for a bunch of ungrateful, undeserving pieces of trash. This was one occasion where mm. the heel was pretty much telling the truth as Owens put the full sale crowd in their place and that brings wow. us to the end of this video. I didn't know that because at that I think I ended up seeing uh that 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 takeover or when I end up seeing it um after hearing so many great things about uh NXT and that's when I started checking out the takeovers and stuff like that so I didn't know that was the you know that even happened that that whole little segment and uh even happened I didn't even know the fans felt that type of way and that that can be the case and that uh, probably sounds believable fans feeling entitled like oh it should be here because we made it what it is but at the same time it's a great opportunity for more people to see it on a bigger stage because if you fill out an arena which they ended up doing damn near selling it out you fill out an arena and my first time watching nxt was nxt brooklyn takeover and when i watched it and i compared it to what you know was happening on the main roster in the atmosphere i was like bro this seems more like the stuff i used to watch back in the day the crowd was electric for every single match the card wasn't too long the matches made sense you know like it it, it had some type of flow i didn't see too much cringe corny bs i was like oh i gotta watch nxt more and the the, once again the atmosphere how big it was how many people was there the crowd going crazy i think i would have for me personally it, it kind of won me over with just being in a different venue in that crowd in that atmosphere compared to just watching it at full cell not to disrespect those that got into nxt when it was only at full cell but just saying 
from a new fan like at that time coming in seeing that there's like oh it made me feel like okay i need to watch the weekly shows or i need to check them out more frequently because this this is what i want to see you know what i'm saying so i get kevin owens on that situation like you know that's 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 an honest honest type of reaction to have towards the fans that you perform in front of like, hey man this is a big opportunity for the brand y'all are being selfish right now so but comment down below let me know some other moments where wrestlers completely bury the fans that wasn't on this list that you guys enjoyed but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel road 250k and i am still the speedy youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace <laughs>